positions of the hands. What you've got to remember, what Ching taught me was when you move on to the next, that sounded really pretentious, sorry about that. What Ip Man taught his students, or Ip Ching taught his students was when you turn, your position of your centre is here. Now I see a lot of people turn and stay on their centre line. Okay, they stay here. We talked about this, and that's, that's all well and good if you're really, really good and no one can get past your hands. But the reality of any punch is I want to be out of the way. Whatever I do, I want to be out of the way before I do anything else. So for example, if I do a bong sal, I'm going to put my weight on my jaw, this side, my structure, this side. So there's my bong sal. So my centre line that was here is now going towards my opponent, but it's here. It's this position down here. But it does the same the opposite side. So it can travel all the way over to there. So then when I come back to face, my centre line is smack bang down the middle again. It's easy to say, yeah, but if you've got most of your weight on one leg, you can easily be pushed. Yeah, you can, but think of the theory of Wing Chun that we've talked about earlier. If I'm in Bong Sal, here from his punch, and he feels that my structure is wrong and he pushes, the theory says step and take. Then you can come back in and use everything you need to. If I'm here and he pushes, the, the amount of things that you can do from this position is huge if you're going to turn again. It's very easy for people who don't understand Wing Chun to criticise Wing Chun and say that it shouldn't be here and it shouldn't be there. It's great. Have your opinions. They're all the same as everyone else's. Opinions are like arseholes. Everyone's got one and they're all full of shit. Okay, so it's as simple as this. As he punches, I've taken the position, taken the angle, that the punch, the direction of the punch, I'm out of the way of it. Because if my bong sale goes wrong and I'm staying there, it's going to get through. If he's quicker than I anticipated or he's got more strength, it's going to get through. So if something goes wrong with my arms and he throws that punch and I'm out of the way of it, then I'm out of the way. Does that make some sense? Yes. Any questions on that? Well, I suppose where you said if you go on one leg, you can easily be pushed, but you can get pushed in any position, can't you? Can. It's just some are a little bit more easy to be pushed, so nothing stops anything, does it? If Steve comes here and he stands facing me and he's strong, yeah, and he's strong in his position, even if he goes one, one leg, here, that's a strong, what people call a strong boxing position here, strong, yeah, whatever he's doing, strong boxing position. But if I go to the side of him and he doesn't see me go, look how strong it is. <laughs> so now tell me that every single stance is better than Wing Chun's neutral stance. Because I'm ready to listen. Because it all depends on how someone's coming at you. And let's be honest, we don't fight like this. Go on, push me, you know, trying to hold it. The arms are there to get past, first of all. So if you don't understand it, there's no point commenting on that. Make sense? So if your stance, your stance and everything is correct position, strength will overcome it. Well, of course it will. Strength. If someone's a lot stronger than you, they'll yeah. move you everywhere. But then you've got to come back to the concepts and the theories. You push me, I'm going to go and step away from it. You pull me, I'm coming into everything that I've got. So if someone's stronger than me, then it's my position to take away their, their, their most strongest points, which is their legs. Yeah? Yeah. So even within boxing, the ones who are really good have got really good footwork, and the people who just stand there are never very good no, at boxing. Not necessarily. There's been a lot of good boxers who just plodded along. I mean, Hagler didn't move a lot at all. He was a southpaw. Hagler didn't move, and he was powerful, and he, he moved his head a lot, but he didn't really move his feet that much. He wasn't a dancer. You know what I mean? Where Ray Lenz would just dance and throw a few little pitter pat punches, whereas yeah, Hagler was always ready to... To bang and launch punches. But he still would have pivoted to follow his opponent. Yeah, of course he exactly would. Exactly like you're yeah. saying. You, you wouldn't just stand there while you're. No, while well, you get to the side. Pivot pivot. To get to Same as Wing Chun. Yeah. If you get past my arm, my legs are going to go back so I can yeah. open the door to get you past. So, what percentage do you think is important with footwork compared to the others? It depends. Depends on, on what's coming. It depends on. If I'm in neutral stance, I'm 50 50. If I'm in turn and stance, I'm in 70 30, 80 That's 20. Right. What I mean is, but, but how important is the footwork in the overall? hands and everything else. They all even mingle together. They're all as important as each other. Because if you cut my legs away, I'm no good as a fighter. If you take my arms away, I'm gonna get bad. Yeah? Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Try fighting Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> there you go.